Today we're talking about General Motors, a company that went from producing cars nobody except JD Power wanted, to producing ventilators that people really need. Shouldn't have required an order through the Defense Production Act to crack that business code. Now I specifically want to explain America's continuing effort to shore up emergency ventilator supplies, a project that has been placed in the hands of Jared Kushner. So don't breathe a sigh of relief quite yet because you're going to need as much oxygen in your lungs as possible. So let's start with this GM defense production order. There is a lot to unpack here. Starting with the fact that uh, GM makes cars. The opposite of ventilators. Oh, you want us to make something designed to make breathing air safer? Well, back to the drawing board. As Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmore put it, it won't happen overnight. Switching from building cars to building something as complicated as a ventilator is going to take a while. To understand exactly what's going on here, we need to take a step back and go to last week when the administration was still a believer in private markets. At that time, the White House was planning to announce a joint venture between a ventilator company, Ventec, and a car company, General Motors. To make a ton of ventilators. The plan was to give Ventec, the ventilator manufacturer, access to a car company's factory in order to severely boost their production capacity. Currently they were making a meager 250 ventilators a month out of a small factory in Washington. We're more defense production acting Ventec here, but who the heck has heard of them? Let's just stick with saying this is a GM thing for the clicks. All this sounds like a good idea, right? What's the problem? Well, there were a ton of problems, starting with the aggressively stupid. The only thing missing was clarity from the government about how many ventilators they needed, and who would be paid to build them. Sir, we just got an order in from the government for a lot of ventilators. Well, how many are a lot? It's somewhere between a few and too many. Now get to work. Of course, not knowing what you're going to buy or who you're going to make the check out to is going to lead to some pretty big problems when it comes to deal making. This is around the same time when you had Trump saying, I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the numbers that are being said in some areas are just bigger than they're going to be. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. You know, you go into major hospitals sometimes, they'll have two ventilators, and now all of a sudden they're saying, can we order 30,000 ventilators? That definitely wasn't the only problem plaguing last week's failed GM deal. The price tag was more than $1 billion, with several hundred million dollars to be paid up front to General Motors to retool a car parts plant where the ventilators would be made with Ventex technology. A whole billion dollars for emergency ventilators? I mean, it's not like we were willing to spend trillions to protect people from this virus last week. You know, we could cut airlines a $49 billion check and save a bunch of lives, but eh. So that billion dollars gave people quite the sticker shock, exposing a deeper problem. America really had no idea who we were negotiating with. GM is insisting, we're not selling the ventilators, we're providing the factory space. You gotta talk to Ventec Life Systems, they're the ones who are making and selling these things. Meanwhile America seems to, at least rhetorically, be thinking that we're still negotiating prices with GM. That would be like getting angry about the price of an iPhone and calling up the factory in China to complain. To the surprise of GM and Ventec, Trump approved the automaker of trying to gouge the government during his Friday press briefing. He tweeted that GM officials want top dollar. GM said it's building the units at cost and is only the contract manufacturer for Ventec, which is the major player in negotiations with the government. At the same time, production numbers in this deal were squarely headed in the wrong direction. An initial promise that the joint venture could turn out 20,000 ventilators in short order had shrunk to 7,500, with even that number in doubt. Okay, we're not sure how many ventilators we're going to need, but it sure as heck is more than 7,500. So that deal fell apart over the weekend. 
Now America is commandeering GM's factories and ordering the medical supplier Ventec Life Systems to start mass producing ventilators there. Essentially the same deal we were trying to negotiate last week, except now there's no negotiation. Unfortunately, all of the same problems exist. America still doesn't know how many ventilators we want, and manufacturers don't know how many ventilators they can make, or even at what price. And Trump still seems to want to negotiate the price with GM instead of Ventec. In fact, the only thing we know now that we didn't know last week is that Ventec and GM together are now legally obligated to undertake some construction, at some price, with some timeline. Glad we really nailed down the important points there. People familiar with negotiations said there was never a firm proposal on volume or timeline. Oh god, are these negotiations going to go the way of every GM vehicle and stall? <sighs> Not quite. Even before this federal government order, it seems like the cogs are in motion, and a GM factory was already being retooled to start making ventilators when we figure out the answers to those truly basic questions. This brings us to another question. While these negotiations are ongoing and manufacturing is being restructuring, well, where are we going to get the medical supplies in the meantime? Does anybody have a guess? Tesla CEO Elon Musk, he's bought 1,000 ventilators from China, uh, and they have been delivered to the state of California and hospitals there. Yes, China continues to be the world's Walmart. We'll shop there, but we're not proud of it. And while American manufacturers are having their arms twisted about even considering making these devices, Chinese manufacturing is kicking into high gear building these machines for export across the world. It's not just Elon Musk buying medical supplies from China either. America began a massive airlift program for expediting the shipping times of Chinese made medical supplies to US hospitals. The plane delivered 130,000 N95 masks. 1.8 million face masks and gowns, 10 million gloves, and thousands of thermometers for distribution. Of course, the name of the game in this episode is ventilators. And while China is hooking us up with all these other important supplies, where are the ventilators? Well, while America was tariffing medical supplies, Europe was placing orders. America is currently trying to persuade America is currently trying to persuade China's largest ventilator manufacturer, whose production has been bought up by parties in Europe through September, to, you know, slide a few hundred ventilators to the United States. No word yet on whether they'll hear us out or not. That's not the last ray of hope in this episode, though. Enter an incredibly unsexy source of ventilators that gets next to no attention because of how obvious it is negotiating with other US ventilator manufacturers. That's right, Ventec isn't a monopoly. Trilogy Evo Universal Ventilator is negotiating with a White House team led by Jared Kushner to build 43,000 ventilators for Americans stricken by the virus. Great, that's a ton of ventilators. What's the problem? Well first, America hasn't been peer pressured into a certain policy decision. Global Trade Alert notes 24 different countries, including China, have imposed some sort of export ban or restriction on exports of medical supplies since January of this year. Oddly enough, Super Trade Protectionist America is not one of those medical export restricting countries. I mean, even European countries are doing it, so you know it's in vogue. This means that some of the ventilators they made this month were sold to Spain and Hungary. The struggle has grown so fierce that last week a trade group representing ventilator manufacturers asked the head of the Federal Emergency Management Agency to decide for the manufacturers whom they should sell to first. Unfortunately, there is yet to be an answer to that question, which led to comments like, We sell to whoever calls, said a medical supply company on Staten Island that bought ventilators in early March and last week hiked its online price from $12,000 to $17,000. We have hundreds of orders to fill. Staten Island? Come on, guys. I know you're barely clinging to that New York City label, but you're still a borough. Where's the solidarity? 
Unfortunately, a complete lack of organization or management with non-Ventec ventilator producers in America means currently production is being sold abroad and to private entities as opposed to the government. Now, I don't want to dismiss efforts altogether because the federal government's negotiations are ongoing with this manufacturer, and I can say that we're trying to get 43,000 ventilators made by that company at some point for some price. The company has also confirmed that they hope to be making 4,000 ventilators of all types each week in the United States by October, and that they would prioritize those communities and countries that need it most. Of course, let's put a little bit of emphasis on countries that need it most, because with their price hikes, pandemic experts seem to interpret this as a little bit less generous than they make it sound. You know, it's a bit more, if another country needs ventilators badly enough to outbid America, well, we're going to give them the contract instead. The federal government could hit them with the old Defense Production Act to prioritize existing American contracts over others. But why make a ventilator company make us ventilators when we could obligate a guard company to do the exact same thing? President Trump evoked the Defense Production Act to compel General Motors to begin mass producing another company's ventilator under a federal contract. But neither Trump nor other senior officials made any mention of the Trilogy Evo Universal. Why? I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure Ford has some abandoned factories that they could take over. We could get a whole rivalry thing going. So that's the current status of our country's efforts for upping our ventilator count. As someone living in Queens, New York, you bet I'll be keeping an eye on this. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, Join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell if you want freedom to continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.